The Amos and Andy Show. A full half hour of entertainment with all the Amos and Andy characters, plus Lud Gluskin and his orchestra, and those famous Delta Rhythm Boys. The kingfish and his wife, Sapphire, are swimming in a pool of unpaid bills, and they can't get their head above water. The biggest pressure is coming from the landlord, who is now at the Stevens' home face-to-face with the kingfish. Good to see you again, Mr. Thompson. You really look great. Ha, <laughs> ha, yes. The years pass, but you ain't changed a bit. I tell you I want my rent. Yep, you ain't changed a bit, all right. Yeah. <laughs> now, Stevens, you ought to be very grateful. You've been getting along on cheap rent for a long time. Only the government keeps me from raising my rent. Yeah, I don't know who keeps me from raising mine, but I can't raise it nowhere. I just... <laughs> now, before I leave, I just want to say this one thing to you. If your rent is not paid by Wednesday, you are going to be thrown out of here with all your broken-down possessions. And don't you talk about my wife that way. <laughs> George, I heard the whole thing. Come on out, he's gone. Yeah, well, we got to do something. You know, we ought to live in a cheaper place. Yeah, you're right, honey. We got to get a smaller place in this apartment. Joyce, do you think you could be happy in a little bachelor apartment? I uh, sure could, honey. But where would you live? <laughs> no, George. What I mean is maybe just a single room. It wouldn't be such a drain on our finances. If we had a room like Andy's got. Yeah, a place like Andy's would be cheaper. Leave it to me, sweetheart. I'll find something. <laughs> I tell you, Henry, it's a bad situation. I done looked everywhere and ain't a room in town to be got. Yes, unfortunate. The housing shortage caught us short of houses. Yeah. You know, seven of my friends is in the quandary. I wonder if they got any vacancies there. You think... <laughs> no, no. No, no, Kingfish, you don't understand. Well, look here. I've got to find something to move into that's cheaper than the apartment I got now. Say, Kingfish, I got an idea. One of my society friends, the Meredith Peabody's, has solved the housing problem by moving into a trailer. Well, um, well, not for me, though. No, no. As a matter of fact, the Peabody's is going to have a big social function in their trailer next week. Hmm, right in the trailer, huh? Oh, yes. It's going to be the outstanding social event of the Lincoln Highway. <laughs> yeah, glad to hear I think I got the invitation right here in my pocket. Yeah, what do I say? Read it to me, man. Yes, here it is. It says here, cocktails and Buffett on Wednesday <laughs> afternoon between 6 and 7 o'clock. The above hours will be strictly observed due to the fact that we are holding this affair in a one-hour parking zone. <laughs> Why? Yeah, the late hangers on will probably end up in the hall and tunnel there, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, well, this don't help me find a room, though. But by the way, Kingfish, the Meredith of Seabodies that I just spoke of has got a trailer that they want to get rid of. What kind of trailer? Well, to tell you the truth, the trailer ain't much good. Yeah, what's wrong with it? Well, it was built with a very low ceiling, and everything inside is cramped so that you got to uh, crawl around in there. Cramped up, huh? Yes, and the worst part is that the cooking stove is under the sleeping mattress in the spring. <laughs> yeah, that's bad arrangement with the stove under the mattress. There. Say, wait a minute, though. Say, Henry, you don't give me an idea. If I could sell this to Andy, me and my wife could take his room. Sell it to Andy? Oh, yeah. You see, Andy has always had the wonder luck. Well, from the size of Andy, he won't lust very far in that thing. Come in, Kingsley. Well, Andy, old pal, I've been doing a lot of thinking about you. Yeah, well, somebody ought to think about me. I was in a rut. Uh, how would you like to be in a rut with wheels on it? <laughs> What you talking about? And uh, to give you the whole story in a couple of eggshells, uh, I know where you can get a wonderful trailer. Yeah, well, what do I do with it? Well, Andy, have you ever been traveling on the open highway in the evening and see the sunset between the cracks of two billboards? <laughs> oh, boy, that must be beautiful. Oh, yeah, just put your eye right up to the crack there, you really see something. Yeah, bring you back to your childhood. It looks like looking at a baseball game through a knothole. 
Uh, well, you got my mouth watering, all right. I'm glad you came in here. Oh, yeah, there's good news tonight, brother. There's good news tonight. <laughs> This certainly do sound good, all right. Oh, yeah, brother, and they're traveling along the road in comfort, leisurely. Travel slow enough to enjoy the beautiful poetry of the highway. Poetry? Yeah. Dancing cheek to cheek is no great sin if you don't scrape her with your chin. Uh, what is that? Burma shave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's one of the greatest sports on the open road. Uh, you must have heard of the big three, Longfellow, Kipling, and Burma shave. Yeah. <laughs> when did they start this stuff? Uh, start that over in China doing the war on the Burma Shave Road. They had all that. <laughs> well, this trailer thing sounds pretty good to me. Uh, another advantage of living in a trailer is that your creditors can't keep knocking on your door all the time. They can't? No, they don't know where your door gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I could live pretty cheap that way, all right. Oh, there ain't nothing to it. You just charge everything for 30 days, then on the first of the month, you move away from your bills. You know? <laughs> well, wait a minute, though. There's only one thing, Kingfish. I ain't got no car to pull this trailer. Well, for the first few months, you won't need none. You just go places that's downhill, you see. <laughs> yeah, but how do I get back? Well, I can't call that, Andy, without breaking a confidence. Uh, all I can say is that the trailer company is working on that now. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a good idea, Kingfish. When could I see this trailer? Well, I guess you could see it tomorrow, next day, or the end of the week. There's no hurry. Oh, no. Well, let's take our time about it. I'll tell you what let's do, Andy. What? Let's go over and see it right now. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see California. I wonder how I'd go about getting there. Want to go to California, huh? Well, now, listen, Brother Ender. If you ever plan to motor west, travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Get your kicks on Route 66. been eating on them? 
Oh, uh, no, Brother Andy, that's the latest thing. That's knotty pine without the knots, you see. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that little window there is boarded up with three or four slats running up and down. Is the glass out? Oh, don't be silly, Andy. That's the latest 1947 invention. Known as the permanent Venetian blind. Uh, no strings, just nails, you see. That? <laughs> They run them up and down this year, huh? Yeah, that's on account of the sunspots. They want the sun to come in that way. Uh... Well, explain the thing to me in here now. Where is everything? Well, it's all here. It's just compact. Uh, everything folds into something else. Where's the washstand? Well, now, that's very compact. Well, where is it? Well, now, all you got to do is to lift this dive in, put it on the bed, shove back the storage chest, unscrew three bolts, remove the spare tire, and there's the washstand. <laughs> Hey, by the way, Kingfish, where is that stove that you told me I could do the cooking on in here? Uh, right where it ought to be, under the mattress and spring. Hey, listen, I don't mind moving that mattress, but you mean to tell me that I got to move the springs too? Oh, not necessarily. Uh, leave the springs there. Turn on the stove and use the springs for a grill. You know, a uh, <laughs> hot dog, hamburgers. And... Uh, what I do about electric lights, Kingfish? Well, now, there's two things you can do, Andy. You see, there's a sliding window in the top of the trailer. In case you find a parking space under a street light. <laughs> or there's another thing you can do. Yeah, I think this other thing is going to be better. What is it? Uh, well, now, you take your extension cord and you hook it up to a live wire wherever you happen to be, you see. Hook up to a live wire? Yeah, a pair of spike shoes come with a trailer and help you climb the light pole, you see. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, suppose I bought this trailer. I got to have a car to pull the thing. Oh, that's just a minor detail, uh... Just put the regular trailer ad in the newspaper. What's that? Oh, just say a gentleman with trailer would like to meet a man with car. Object going same direction. That's all. <laughs> well, Andy, I hear that you're going to buy a trailer, son. Yes, Amos. I'm going out in the wild open spaces and really enjoy life. Oh, tired of living in your room, is you? Oh, well, the trouble with the room is stay in the same place all the time. Can't get out and see the sunset through the signboards and all that stuff. <laughs> well, if you want to move around, I guess that's all right to get a trailer. Oh, Joe, the beauty of living in a trailer, Amos, is that you can have breakfast in New York, lunch in New Jersey, and supper in Pennsylvania. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, all right. You're making pretty good time there, though, ain't you, Amos? <laughs> Yeah, and I'll even make better time of that if I ever get a car to pull me. <laughs> well, I hope you have a nice time with your trailer, all right? Yeah, and as soon as I arrange for the automobile to pull me, I want you and Ruby and the kids to take a trip with me. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Got room for all four of us, didn't you? Well, uh, I figured on you and Ruby and the kids sleeping up front in the car. You know? Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Well, hello there, Amos. Uh, say, Andy, uh, could I see you alone for a minute? Sure, sure. Well, I'll leave you two schemers here together. I know you got some kind of business deal. I'll see you later in the trailer, Andy. So long. So long, son. Uh, leave the door open there, will you? We'll get some air in here. Okay, so long. What you want, Kate? Uh, Andy, I really got some good news for you, son. I got a man with a car that will go 50-50 with you on taking a trip with your trailer. You remember the lawyer, uh, LaGuardia Stonewall? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm not him. Yeah, well, uh, uh, he just went down to the five and ten cent store to get himself a pair of eyeglasses. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, he, you see, he don't believe in eye doctors. No. Yeah. Uh, he say that, uh, he'd be over here in front of your office with his car at three o'clock. Well, exactly three o'clock. Yeah, there he is now. Uh... <laughs> It's a good thing that other car was there. He'd have gone right past the office, wouldn't he? Yeah, there he is, getting out the car. Look at him there. Yeah, got on his glasses, too. Look at them things. They look like the bottom of a milk bottle. <laughs> Oops, it is. He tripped over that fire hydrant and fell down. And he's the man that's going to drive me, huh? Yeah, wait a minute. Uh, come in, come in. Well, uh, let, let me brush myself off here. Yeah. I, I stepped out of the car, a small boy tripped me up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen, but I'm looking for my good friend, the Kingfish. Yeah, well, this is me over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, pardon me, Kingfish. My, my new driving glasses. See, I don't see a thing. Uh, how is it working? Oh, I still got to get a few bugs out of them. Uh, LaGuardia, I want you to meet my friend and your future vacation mate, Andy Brown. Mr. Brown, it's a great pleasure. Oh, uh, no, no, that's the clothes tree. Brown's over here. <laughs> 
Uh, you really think this man is the man to do the driving, you think? Uh, uh, how are you, Mr. Brown? And where are you? Oh, <laughs> uh, here I am. Here I am. And how is you? Yeah, well, why don't you take off your glasses, Gordy? No, the girl behind the counter told me to keep them on and get used to them. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do all my driving in these. Yeah. Listen, uh, you got a driver's license, ain't you? Oh, sure I have. Yeah, it is right here. Yeah, let me see this. Yeah, thing. look at that. Oh, uh-huh. lay on here. This license not valid unless driver is wearing binoculars. <laughs> He got enough glass on his nose there to make a telescope. We ain't got to worry about him. Yeah. You know, Kingfish, maybe we'd be better off if he just stuck his head down on the dashboard and drive by the instrument. Uh, uh, you feel safe about this trip, don't you, LaGuardia? Well, if you want to make it 100% safe, uh, just let Mr. Brown drive and let me lay back in the trip. Yeah, well, I got a safer idea than that. If I'm going anywhere with you, I'm going to walk. <laughs> The deal is off, LaGuardia. Well, all right. Two me. It's on, boy. Listen, man, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'll lend you my car, and when you leave town, I'll even take your room off your hand. Now you're talking. It's a deal. What do we do about LaGuardia here? Oh, don't worry about him. He'll come out of that closed closet after a while. <laughs> <laughs>
I guess I'll get ready to shove off here. Yeah? Look who's coming. Well, Sadie Simpson. Andy, when are you going to get the rest of your clothes out of your room? Now, wait a minute, Jerry. Wait just a minute. I'm paid up till Saturday. I'm going to sleep in the suburbs for three or four nights. Say, by the way, Sadie, uh, would you like to step inside and see my trailer before I leave? Andy, that's like putting a tuna in a sardine can. <laughs> oh, no. You can squeeze yourself in there. Maybe I can squeeze myself in there. But then I'll be too slow to squeeze out. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that trailer would be a little tight around the waist for you, I think. <laughs> you like that, Jordy. I'm more the Quonset Hut type myself. <laughs> oh, no, Sadie. You ought, to, you ought to see it in there. It's really compact. Of course, to get to the stove, you got to move the mattress. Well, and I hope that you have better luck in your trailer than the one I had once. Well, what happened to you, Sadie? I'm driving down the highway 50 miles an hour when a robber broke into the trailer. Now, wait a minute. Hold everything. If you was going 50 miles an hour, how could the robber break into the trailer? He was very good looking, and I slowed down for it. <laughs> Sadie, did, did, did the man steal anything? He tried to steal my car and my money, but he didn't because I bit him. Oh, you bit him. Uh, where'd you bite him? <laughs> In Western Illinois. <laughs> Well, folks, uh, here I go to get a few good nights' sleep in the wide open spaces. So long, Andy. Well, good luck to you, Andy. Well, thank you, folks. Thank you. Lighten, give a hoy, crank her up, and let's head for the fresh air and them wide open spaces. <laughs> Bumpy ride, but I'm glad that Lightning found this spot at last. Uh, uh, now for a good night's sleep. Get that trailer out of here. This is a residential section. You want me to lock you up? Oh, me. Half of the night is gone, but I'm glad we're really out here in the country. Uh, uh. Now for a good night's sleep. Get that tin chicken poop out of here. This is a private golf course and you're parked on the 18th green. <laughs> oh, Miss Andy, uh, wake up, Miss Andy, wake up. Oh. What's the matter, Whiteman? Won't the man let us park here neither? Uh, yeah, sir. It's okay with him, but I got a pain. Ah, uh, well. Here. Here's a dollar. Oh, uh, don't wake me up for 24 hours. Boy, I am happy now. I want to lay here and enjoy the fresh country air. Ah, uh, yeah, sir. And close the door, Whiteman. Ah, uh, here you is, mister. Uh, here's a dollar for 24 hours parking. Say, Bunny, is there a man asleep in that trailer? Ah, uh, yeah, sir. Well, you better close the windows because the carbon monoxide from the rest of the cars in this garage might knock them out. <laughs> Landlord, don't you come around my office howling at me. I ain't scared of you no more. I got that nasty letter you wrote me, Stevens, about giving up your place. Now, give me the keys to that apartment. I've got it rented already. There's your old keys. Take them. And everything I said in that letter goes double fast. Now get out of my office. And you'll be out of that apartment by six o'clock tonight. Goodbye. Well, I'm glad I told him off. Uh, 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 hello? Hello, George. This is Sapphire. Did the landlord find you? Uh, honey, we is all set. Start packing. Uh, we got to get out by six o'clock. Well, where are we going? Andy's room? Yeah, I just hear that Andy's very happy with that broke down trail I stuck him with, and I'm going over to get his room right now. Oh, that's wonderful, honey. Goodbye. Well, everything works out fine. Yes, sir, that's really good news tonight. Huh? Andy, what you doing coming in here? Hello, Kingsley. Andy, I hear you was a happy man. Oh, yeah, I is a happy man. I just sold that trailer back to the man I bought it from, and now I'm back in my room where I should have stayed in the first place. Oh, now, wait a minute, Andy. I done already notified the landlord, that, uh, that, 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 and, and, and he done rented my apartment. Yeah, I, I was counting on me and Sapphire moving in your room. Yeah, well, that ain't going to work unless you want me in there with you all. <laughs> oh, me. 
I've got to find a place to live, and I've got to find it right now. Sapphire, I'm telling you, if that Andy Brown hadn't double-crossed me that way, we would have still been in our old apartment. George, it's all your fault. And to think that after all these years, we wind up in a place like this. Oh, cheer up, honey. And listen, do me a favor. Lift up that mattress and make me a cup of coffee, will you, honey? <laughs> When I was in these pants, my mama done told me that she sang a woman who sweet talk and give you the big eyes. But when the sweet talking done, a woman the two faced, so right, brother. Oh, worry something who leave you to sing the blues, the blues in the night. Right. Now the rains are falling here, the train are calling who? My mama done told me. Here's a lonesome whistle blowing across the tops of hooey. Yep, my mama done told me. A hooey da hooey. Oh, clickety clacker echoing back the blues. The blues in the night. The evening breeze will start the sea to cry and the moon will hide its light. When you get the blues in the night, take my word, the mockingbird will sing the saddest kind of song. He knows things are wrong and he's right. You know he's always right. From Natchez to Mobile, from Memphis to St. Joe, wherever the four winds blow. I've been in some big towns and heard me some big talk, but there is one thing I know. A woman with two faces, a word is something to leave you to think the blues, the blues in the night. Got the blues on my left. The blues on my right, the blues in the day, my mama was right. I've got those blues in the night. <laughs> come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>